In our last podcast episode, we talked about Incarnate Dungeon Draft and other dungeon drawing software. Now, I've got a copy of Dungeon Draft, and I thought I'd go through with you how to create a very basic dungeon. So, rather than use something I've just made up on the fly, what I'm going to do is actually going to use something as a reference point. And what I'm going to use is a really old, when I say really old, 1995 adventure from this dungeon magazine issue number 53 and it's called Clash's Sepulchre and the reason I've chosen this is because I personally think this is one of my favorite dungeons easily it's a really good adventure it's got a good mixture of overland travel an overland encounter and then you've got a proper dungeon full of traps variety of monsters puzzles and a nice boss well I say a nice boss. Actually, the boss is a complete and utter dick. But that's second edition for you, which is what this was designed for. Which is really easy to convert into fifth edition. I suggest you go have a look. So here is the map I'm going to be working on, which is the catacombs, which is the inside map of the dungeon itself. Now you can also see that I've um, scribbled all over this because I, you know, I've had this thing for about 25 years now. And I said I've run this probably about at least three times. I've run this. Without further ado, let's head over to Dungeon Draft. And let's see if we can make it. Now, what I've done first is I've scanned it in using my phone, because you can scan with your phone these days. Put it into GIMP, which is an image manipulation software, turned it into a PNG and removed the background and spent far too long scaling it so it was even, because the scan didn't come up even. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a trace, which really helps in designing it. So let's head over to Dungeon Draft and see what it looks like. Okay, so after a bit of faffing, I've actually managed to get the map in there. Now, I say a bit of faffing because I've just said on the intro video that I made this into PNG. I just updated the software, and the current version of Dungeon Draft only allows JPEG import. So I've had to basically go start from scratch. However, I've got in there now. This is my map. I've got the opacity, so I can change the opacity and turn it off and on. And I've had to faff around the scale a bit, but... I've not videoed that because it shows a bit too much of me faffing around. So, we'll go straight into here. Now, we've got set several different tools we can use in order to paint these things on. I'm going to turn the opacity down just a little smidge more. There we go. So, I'm actually going to start with these cave areas, mainly because I think personally working through it, that's how it works a bit better. So, what I'm going to do... Right, dig cave. So I'm just going to trace this kind of rough shape here and colour in some splodges. And there we go. And I'm going to trace this rough outline here and then try and fill in the middle. Again, it's hard to see because of the opacity, but what we can always do is just do a couple of swipes just to kind of see around there. And as you can see, yeah, we've got most of that. I mean, that's pretty close. It's not perfect, but that's pretty close. Okay. That's actually one of the most difficult things done because the rest of the time we are just going to go back to the building tool. Uh, we're going to pick uh, one of these here. So I'm going to pick ooh, smart stone, cave floor, or cobble, concrete. I'm going to go for smart stone. This is a cultist tomb. Cultists have got respect for their work. And we're just going to use the basic builder now. On the whole, this is going to be easy, but there might be a couple of issues down here. But we're going to snap to the grid for most of these, and quite literally, all we do is just draw these things in. I'm not happy with those walls. I'm actually going to do all that because I've got wooden walls, which makes no sense. So I'm going to go back and change them to stone walls because concrete again doesn't make any sense. So I'll go for stone. Do you know what I really sh should I go for cobble floors? Let's just put that in and see what that looks like. Oh, yeah, let's stick for cobble floors then. There we go. And then we're just going to trace the majority of these things in. Now, some weird things happen there. We'll fix that in a minute. But for now, now here, I'm just going to do a little bit of artistic license and kind of do this here and this here. Mainly because it's not going to map, map up correctly, but I'm not bothered about that at this point. And the important thing is to make sure that matches. There we go. Again, I'm going to ignore that. I'll come back to that in a minute. So, draw in most of these little standard shapes, which we've got there. And then we've got up here, we've got another one. And then what I'll do is I will come back in a minute 
and change some of them. So that's a lot of it done. And then I'm just going to change my shape tool to this one here and go and trace these shapes around here. And as you can see, within just a few seconds, I have made ooh, the majority of my dungeon work. Now this one's a bit of a weird one. We'll come back to this one. Oh, there's another... Um, oh, I've missed a tunnel. I've missed a tunnel! Oh, that's not good, is it? There we go. That's better. So back to the shape tool. Let's put this one in. Yeah, as you can see, I've got the majority of my shapes in. Now, secret doors and things like that, we're going to come to later. Doors we're going to come to later, because they are a faff. It's a one criticism I have against this software. So as we can say, we are mostly there. I might take a bit of artistic license with this bit. Yeah, do you know what? I'm going to, because... I'm going to do that. There we go. I think, I mean, you've got most of that there. Now, these I'm going to come back to again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on this tool, but I am going to turn off the grid, or leave on the grid, and turn off the snap to grid. I'm just going to, because I could have actually done some of these bits without the snap to grid. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to go back and I'm going to just do this bit here without the snap to grid. And as you can see, it kind of goes a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, not the best. So, I'm going to turn back to that cube and I'm just going to draw these things in. So, oh, they might want to be a bit bigger. Now, this is quite possibly. Oh, no, that one wants to be bigger. There we go. And what these are, these are all little tombs, which some of them have got nasty ghouls inside. So we're going to do that, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do that. Got to make them slightly bigger. That one wants to be slightly bigger. There we go. Okay, they're not very consistent. There's a bit of a variation here, but yeah, there we go. That's, that's got it on the whole. Now I need to draw some walls in because the secret walls and all kinds of things and the way we do doors in Dungeon Draft is can be a bit of a faff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in, again, I'm turn snaps back on because this is a very gridded one. So we're going to do that there. Because that's one of the most important ones. And we're going to put some of these walls back in where we want doors. Because we will need them back in because of the way doors are done. I love this bit of the map. This map that's brilliant because the players will have to get across this chasm, have to get through the rubble, have to get past the trap, have to get past some zombies, have to find the secret door, and then they basically find another wall here. Oh god, I've got the wrong wall type. Oh, bugger. Right, I'm going to have to redo that one. Oh, no, right. I have to undo... All those walls, I've just realised I had the wrong type of wall picked. That's bloody annoying, isn't it? Battlement stone. I thought I had stone picked. Ah, that's better. Right, okay. There we go. Yep, one there. Oh, that one needs to come out a bit. We can delete those and actually go back to the correct wall. So we've got to put the right wall back in. And let's put one there, and let's put one there. Right, so all our walls are done. Let's do a little bit more scenery. Oh, no, hang on. We haven't put all our walls in because there's a couple of doors here. Now, uh, we want one here. We want one here because what this is is like a statue. So I'm going to have to turn the snap off again, and I'm going to have to go like so. There we go. There might be a bit of stylistic interpretation here. I've just drawn the secret doors as a wall across. You may actually want to put a gap in there for secret walls if you're using this in, say, Roll20, because you don't want to, people to easily reveal that area. But if you're using dynamic lighting, it doesn't matter. So let's go back to here and let's put in some water. So there's actually a water brush, which we can do here. So we're gonna, we need some water going through this section here. So to be fair... Select this brush size. Splodgy, 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 splodge. Done. There we go. We can also put some water at the bottom here if we want. We can actually follow the entire water route if we want. And there we go. I'm not very good at tracing. I don't want to get it. 
I'm going to be very careful that it doesn't go on over there because otherwise it's going to draw the water in. Now this pool here, I want this pool to look dark and ominous, so I'm actually going to make this much darker and I'm going to make it much greener. There we go. I want that to look kind of splodgy and horrible and because basically there's a couple of horrible slimy monsters at the bottom of that pool. Yeah. Right, let's have a look. Let's go back to our trace image. Let's turn our opacity all the way down. Look at that. I mean, you could really use that as it is, but of course we want a bit more pizzazz. We want a bit more showbiz than that, don't we? And if, in fact, I could probably just turn the opacity off now and just leave it, but we need to do some more doors. In fact, I've just realised there's a wall missing there. So let's go back to our wall tool and we need to snap the grid back on because we want a door there. Right, we need some doors. Let's put some doors in. What kind of style of door do we want? We want them to be consistent. Let's go for door number nine. I think door number nine seems... Now what I might do actually... Right, I'm going to jump ahead a bit here. This is door 12, which is the portcullis. Now what's supposed to happen here is there's actually like um, a couple of... Not doors, but like peak holes so people can see through there. So I'm actually going to... Oh, that's, that's really annoying. They haven't appeared. That is ultra annoying. They haven't appeared at all. Why have they not appeared? So, let's go back to here. Let's go to that and delete and see what happens. Well, that's no good. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to try that and put that there. Hmm. Why you no work? Right, something is not right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire wall and delete it and start again because I don't think I've set the wall up correctly. He says, wall tool, stone wall, let's just go to there. Right, I think that by going back and forth, I've actually placed two walls there is what I've done. So I should have right clicked. So let's go back to me portal tool. Let's go back to that. I'm going to stick that there. Yeah, that's that's a good way of doing it. Actually, there should also be, if I remember rightly, another portcullis there. Ah, again, I've, what I've done is I've done the walls twice, which was foolish. So I'm going to delete that. Delete that. Go back to the wall tool. And go like that, like that, and then right click. There we go. Now go to there, click the portcullis. There we go. In fact, the portcullis is in the wrong place. That should be a door. That should be a portcullis just there, which you can't see on this opacity. If I turn that opacity right up, there you go. That should be a portcullis. So let's go back to the wall tool. Let's put a wall here. Let's go back to the door tool and put the portcullis there. There we go. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right, I'm going to have a problem with all these bloody walls now, aren't I? So I'm going to delete them all again. So that one is coming off. That one is coming off. Let's rebuild the wall tool. Wall and put one there. And put one there. And then what doors am I picking? Standard door. Oh, it's going to be a stone door, isn't it? It's going to be them. So let's put one there. Let's put one. Oh, they're a bit big. I don't like them. Can you scale them? Um, that might be better. Mm, that might be better. They. That, that looks a bit more like a door. I mean, they're wooden doors. That wouldn't bloody work. Okay, so we've got another problem here. So you delete. Wall tool there. So I've probably got the same problem here, haven't I? But that's a secret door. We'll come, we're will come. we not going to put the secret doors in because players won't know that they're there. So let's put that door there. Let's put that door there. And that's all the doors that players will be able to see. Right, what we need now is a bit of furniture, a bit of sprucing up. So what we do here is we go to Object Tool. And when this menu appears on the right, which gives us all kinds of things we can put in. And we've even got a search with a tag tool here, which we can search for things. 
So what I'm going to pick first is I'm going to need some stairs. There's stairs in a few places on this. So I think we need a couple of staircases. So I'm going to, there we go. If I look there, there's a few stairs. Oh, and there's a ladder. Right. I'm going to start with the ladder because there is a ladder leading down into the dungeon. So I'm going to pick you. And stick you, if you right click it rotates, there we go, that's the ladder down into the dungeon, that's where the players enter. Where's a nice stone staircase? That one looks, oh look at that, that looks good, that leads down, that leads down, that's looking good, I've just realised there's portcullises there because that's a little, um, that's a wee little prison that. So I'm going to need some more port courses. Right, these steps are a little bit weird. I think we're going to need something like that for those steps. So you can see steps leading up. It's not quite right, but I think that conveys the image pretty well. Right, yes, wall tool again. It's because we need some port courses. So wall there, 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 there. Portal tool, portcullis, there, 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 there. There we go. That's our wee little prison. Stairs are all done. Happy with that. So we need some pillars. We need a shrine. We need a throne. Oh, stairs. There's stairs there. There are stairs leading up, which I forgot about. So let's go back to the object tool. I think we can have steps leading down behind into this little like treasure room that's back there so i don't know i'm going to do this bit we'll come back to that bit because that's supposed to be a big chasm we need a statue in here and we need a temple and we need things like that so what we need to find now is we need treasure well treasures just jumped out i mean why not put a big stonking great chest there no it's not supposed to be a treasure chest that that's supposed to be a tomb that's supposed to be a tomb, so... Woods, weapons, no. Water, trees, traps. Ooh, we've got traps. We can put loads of traps in. Tools, wood, structures. What structures have we got? Oh, we've got altars. Oh, we've got a nice big altar. Oh, that's good, because we want an altar. We want an altar here. So... Let's, oh, that's a good one. Look at that one. Mm. Ooh. I reckon, yeah. Put a big altar there. That looks good. Now we've got something here, which is, this is, um, in the story, this is like, a, this is a fake tomb. So we need to find a tomb somewhere, don't we? We need, what we need is a search in here. I don't seem to have one at the moment. Um, so what I'm looking for, like you can see there's all kinds of awesome things. Oh, broken bridge. Oh, broken bridge would we work, because what we could do is we could put the broken bridge here. I need to scale it down a bit, though. Because that would at least suggest... There we go. What I might do is I might put ah, let's put some more water. Let's put some more water kind of under the broken bridge then here. Let's do that. Oh, I've made it all the dark dingy water. Oh dear. No, I don't want that. I want it to be nice blue. There we go. But let's yeah, let's put that under there like that. There we go. Statues. We need a statue. So this is a puzzle involving the statue. So let's put a nice big Oh, you need to scale up a bit back to one. Set you back to one. And then you need to go there. So that's a puzzle involving the statue. Basically, what happens is a, a nasty pit trap comes down and they need to use the statue. In fact, it should be a round statue. But no, that'll work. That'll work fine. We're happy with that. Pillars. Pillars. There we go. We've got plenty of pillars here. Nice stone pillar. Let's up the scale a smidge so it matches that. There we go. Look at that. Bob's your uncle. There we go. Now, what we want here is we want a throne. We want a throne. I tell you what, I reckon. But this is supposed to be some like an embalming chamber. This is basically where the main boss has been embalmed. So, it's supposed to be a like a bath 
a sunken bath, but... Ah, here we go, some tombs. There we go, sarcophagus. Or, um... The very first time... Oh, there you go, it's supposed to be like a death cult, so let's go for that one. Let's set the scale back to one. Perfect. And then the real one is here. Double perfect. Look at that. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Right, it's supposed to be embalmed here, so we're looking for some kind of pool. Oh, look at this. Fountains, pools. There we go. I reckon that's there. And then we have to up the scale a bit because... Yeah. This is some kind of embalming pool. But I'm going to go back, because I reckon he was... You know, he was an evil thing summoned, so I reckon here. I'm going to change it slightly. I think it was like, I think it's like a dresser. But I'm going to put a nice occult symbol there, just to, just to make people go, ooh, what's that? Basically, when you come in here, there's supposed to be some zombies, basically, playing cards. So, I want furniture, 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 fixings. Mm. So there's a bathtub. I prefer the stone pool. It's more ominous. Ooh, skeletons. Oh, I'm going to throw a couple of skeletons in. Right, I'm going to have to snap the grid off. Let's throw a couple of skeletons in here. fact they should all have a skeleton in i can't remember <laughs> do you know what i could go back to the instructions and see which ones have got them because each one of them is numbered in the rule book tables oh, god pillock right we want a let's go for a round table yeah there oh there's no chairs chairs there's chairs there there we go now, that shows some stools, but I'm just going to put... A uh, round table and some stools doesn't seem right. Oh, look at that! Just noticed something else we want. We want that, because that's our boss man. That is our boss fella, just there. There we go, perfect. Yeah, let's put some of these in, so there we go. Little table and chairs, he's sitting around. Now, we just want some scatter now. This is where I think this is where it gets really cool. So scatter terrain is something slightly different. So what we're going to need here is we want that rubble, that stones, rocks. And we're going to just pick some of these here because we've got a couple of things here. Now what you do is you just plonk it down and what it does... Is it actually puts it in kind of random positions so you can kind of do a couple of these here and there change the brush every so often and it can help just make a little bit of variation so let's put a couple here as well do you know what i think what it needs right i'm going to turn off the turn the opacity now right the way down let's have a look at our dungeon map i reckon you know that is more than enough to be getting on with. I think that's that that's workable at this point. But we could go further. We could go further. So let's just do one or two of the other things. I think we want something in here, the either side of there. So mm, treasure. Let's make this look like a treasure room. There's your sarcophagus. Let's go for scatter treasure. And pick some of this. There we go. So there you go. Your players will walk in there and go, ooh, treasure. Let's put some lighting in. Now this is the really... We can do environment tools, which is uh, ambient light. No, let's put some light in. So if you're going to be using this in Roll20 and you're in a your pro customer, then of course you can use the ambient lighting or the dynamic lighting. But we can put some lighting sources in here as little extra things. So this is really cool. As you can see, as I move it around here, it does stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of just ambient lights in. So I'm going to look at like a green glow coming from this pool. 
I just do that, you can see, I mean, it's not much, but it just adds a bit of variety to it. I'm also going to add an orange glow coming from here. And let's do come some kind of pinpoint light here because, you know, the zombies are there having a meal. And the only thing I haven't got is that curtain going up there, but I'm going to ignore the curtain because the curtain players just look the other side of the curtain no matter what anyway. And I could go crazy, but it's supposed to be a dungeon. It's supposed to be all be in the dark. I think that's, that's per personally, I think that's done. So there you go. I mean, that's taken me, with faffing, I mean, this, this video would be shorter, but that's taken me about half an hour, 25 to 30 minutes to, 30 minutes to complete. Although there was some faffing at the beginning, and what I've done is I've shown you a bit of a shortened version. But you can see how quickly and easily it is to put together a really respectable dungeon with some furniture and some bits of bobs in absolutely no time.